The Chicago Bulls get Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic back in the starting lineup. What is that going to look like coming back tonight? We'll talk about all that more on today's episode of the Windy City Breeze Sports Talk Daily. Let's go. What is good, everybody? It's your boy, Pat, the designer, back at it again. Uh, breaking news here. The Bulls will get Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic back tonight versus the Charlotte Hornets. It's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to utilize these guys. Now, both players are coming back on a minute restriction. Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic will also come off of the bench in this game. And the biggest question is, right, what is that going to look like trying to work these guys back? in with this team I think the transition for Vooch is pretty easy right like we know what he is we know how he works um, of course they're both on minutes restrictions this is a game that the Bulls still should be able to get I said this on Locked on Bulls yesterday like what are the Hornets good at right like they're they're literally one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA one of the worst offensive teams in the NBA while the Pistons were on their 20 game their 27 game losing streak 27 or 28 um, the uh, the Hornets were quietly on a 12 game losing streak of their own they just broke that uh in a game where it took everybody going berserk for them to be able to get the get get a win um it's it's a game the Bulls should be able to win without either Zach Levine or Nikola Vucevic but it's going to be very interesting to see kind of how they're utilized heading into this game because with Vooch right you know working him back in still coming off of the bench he's coming in he's going to be able to facilitate he's going to be able to give you that pick and pop pick and roll option could this be a long-term thing for Vooch coming off of the bench I doubt that I think this is just them playing in trying to work him slowly back in but it does give you an option at the center position coming off of the bench that the Bulls uh I guess the bench unit has not had right and you'll get to see him working in with Zach Levine as well and I think Zach is probably the biggest question mark for this team you're at a point right now where when you look at Zach Levine the Bulls fans everywhere are asking the same question is he a guy that is going to come back and be able to fit in to what the Chicago Bulls are doing here they've played really well without him is he going to be able to just come back in and mentally be able to lock in with the Bulls that's going to be a major question for the Bulls moving forward here because with Zach Levine right the Bulls are doing a lot of things that accentuate Zach Levine's game they're doing a lot of things that should make Zach's life easier finding guys open in the corner catch and shoot opportunities left and right Zach Levine one of the best catch and shoot players in the league the real question is is Zach Levine going to buy into it is he going to be on board with kind of what Billy Donovan's scheme is because at the end of the day this is like what was it last year against Charlotte or two years ago against Charlotte? Apparently this is right where the Chicago bulls beef between Zach Levine and Billy Donovan started where he ended up benching Zach Levine. So are we going to see this all come full circle where Zach Levine coming back in this game versus Charlotte? We're going to see a little bit more of a buy-in. I think that's what you need to see to feel confident about Zach Levine being a part of this team. There, Hayes laid out. He, he did a great job on uh, locked on bulls laying out scenarios for the return of Zach Levine and what could go right and what could go wrong. And the, the thing that to me was the funniest is the only scenario where things go right is Zach Levine comes back in. He plays really well. He buys into the system. Things end up working out him and Billy Donovan smooth over whatever they've got going. And all of a sudden you feel like, okay, now with Kobe white, with the uh, development of Kobe white, with how this team has won and, and moved forward these last couple of games, everybody's all kumbaya. Everybody's all excited. It's the only scenario where things work because every other scenario is kind of like, or Zach Levine comes back and he doesn't like it. And he takes a bunch of shots and the Chicago bulls immediately start losing to one of the worst basketball teams in the NBA. You already know if the bulls lose tonight, we know that they're going to be coming for Zach's head. Um, like it, it's and and it just, it adds to the narrative and it kills your trade value. And now you can't move him for the same amount that you would have been able to move him for. There's so many question marks around bringing Zach Levine 
Dwayne back onto the floor, which is why I said you probably shouldn't play him here again until you trade him. But you do have to have you do have to have him on the court a little bit to try and get that trade value up. And if Zach Levine does want to leave, that's how you kind of make this work for both sides. You got to get on the court. You got to play well. You got to buy into the system, and you have to believe that there can be winning with you on the court. And I get it, right, Zach Levine? You look at his numbers. He's an excellent player. He can score the basketball well. I mean, honestly, I look at that Knicks game. He was the type of player that we needed in that Knicks game to probably push us over the top. Um, but outside of all of that, he's still one of the most losing players in the NBA. He still has one of the worst win percentages in the NBA, which I could deal with if we're just talking about, right, look, going back what, four or five years with Levine? Like, of course he's got one of the worst win percentages in the NBA. The team was terrible forever. That's a stat that really doesn't mean much when you take the whole thing into account. But when you look at even the last couple of seasons, right, Chicago Bulls, ton of winning ways while Zach Levine is off the court, uh, uh, DeMar DeRozan breaking Wilt records, all of those things, right? You, you look, okay, all right, we're good. We're winning the game. When we get Zach Levine back, we're going to cook. Zach Levine comes back, and we immediately start losing. Right, Zach Levine comes back, and we immediately start going the, the other direction. Now we go into the next season, and we're like, oh, man, Zach and DeMar starting the season off. This is going to be perfect. Io's just got to facilitate to him. It's going to be great. Here we go. Terrible start to the season. Terrible midway point to the season. The team doesn't get on track until Patrick Beverly shows up, and then all of a sudden you had a good finish to last year. Like that, that, that to me speaks volumes when you're talking about. And it's not to, to slight who Zach Levine is or what Zach Levine can do. He's a very talented player. He's an elite scorer in this NBA. But the question is, is that going to lead to winning ways? Tonight's a night where you got to change the narrative. And I get it. It's versus Charlotte, but you better start changing the narrative now versus the teams that are kind of easier to get into. Uh, and, and I think a lot of the focus is going to be, how does this offense look? Is it going to look disjointed with Zach Levine coming off of the bench? Is it going to look disjointed uh, or, or is it going to look like the team's fight isn't the same level, right? Like the, the at a minimum, we feel like, I feel like we've set a standard of we're not going to play worse than this. Our worst game is the second game versus Philly, where at that point it was just like, we're too injured and we have nobody that can play this team. Uh, 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 play Joel and B down low. Okay, I can deal with that loss. Blowout loss was crazy, but I can deal with that. That next game versus the Knicks, that fight is still there. They're still going all out. Second of a back-to-back. -back. You end up running out of steam at the end of the game, but that game was really good and really close the entire game. It was a fun game to watch. And I think that right when you start to see are we going to see that mindset stay? Are we going to see that level of heart stay? Are we are we going to see Kobe's leadership stay? Because what I love about Kobe White, and I, I, know, I don't know if y'all saw the mic'd up version, uh, um, where he goes out and right after that, he's, he's talking to DeMar, you got to boom, you got to make this out. You can't miss on that. You have to make that play. And, and seeing him talk to DeMar, right, and telling him, you can't miss, you got to make that play, that I love. That's what I want to continue to see happening. That's what I want to continue to see this this Bulls team be able to go out there and do is have a voice that is going to tell people what they need to hear. And if Zach Levine comes out and Kobe White tells him, you can't miss on this, you got to make this happen, blah, 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 and he don't want to hear that, all right, that tells me a lot. So will we see the mentality, the leadership, and all of that remain at the same level that it has been with Zach Levine out? That's going to be the real question. Zach hasn't been on the court since December 23rd, so you're probably not going to see a ton of them tonight. I'd say maybe 18 to 20 minutes of Zach Levine tonight. Um, Cause you do want to work him back slowly. You don't want him to, to you don't want that inflammation in the foot to, to swell back up. Um, he's back a little bit ahead of schedule, which is good to see. So we'll see what this Bulls team ends up doing tonight, man, versus Charlotte. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. Also, make sure to check out P-Kid over on the Chicago Bulls breeze. He's going to have a video breaking all this down as well. And he's going to be uh, uh, um, your go-to for Chicago Bulls here on the Windy City Breeze. So tune in with him over on the Bulls breeze. Of course, we'll still cover the Bulls here on the main channel. And we got JC covering the Bears over on the Chicago Bears breeze. And we're going to cover them here at as well. So as always, man, it's your boy, Pat, the designer back at it again to continue watching our Chicago bears and bulls content. Click the links on the screen, check the links in the description below and make sure y'all tuned in for the daily show. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Peace.